Okay, sorry, I'm just continuing on now. <clears throat> so yeah, so we're, we're, we're at economic, remember? We're talking about offshore manufacturing. So cheap labor is often accompanied by poor working conditions. And so this is one of those ethical conditions that designers need to make because it is possible to, um, it's definitely possible to pay them a fair wage and still be able to make huge profits because you don't need to pay them anywhere. Like their minimum wages are so, are so much lower than ours. But it becomes unethical when these factories, you kind of turn a blind eye and you're like, oh yeah, you know, they already pay them whatever and it's fine and it's just, you just go with the flow, I think, yeah, anyway. Um, so taking advantage of the economically vulnerable community should not be acceptable. Um, however, this is where we come in, the hedonistic nature of Western societies regularly turn a blind eye. And I have to say, like, that's so true. I go to Kmart and I guess um, I'm, I think it's going to be something that's going to be a growing trend in in caring about this sort of stuff so um one of the reasons for that is communication technologies society is becoming more aware of the processes in the product life cycle before it lands on the shop floor and this is likely to do to do with um the increase in communication technologies and the ability for everyday society people me and you to be able to share these issues to a large multinational audience via social media so we can see something that we see on facebook or instagram and we can easily share about share that and become activists ourselves um even in a small way it's still like it's still spreading the word um and we can choose who who we follow what pages we follow and stuff and so we're more and more exposed to things that maybe we do care about and that will help us change our habits um, some consumers also make their purchasing decisions based on whether the production process of the product is ethically sound. So there are a lot of people today that, you know, they do want to know what, you know, what the process is, where it came from. You see it with, with, um, with food, even people that, you know, I, I, I'm not talking vegan right now, but I'm just talking even, even meat eaters. A lot of people really care about where that meat came from and, and was, it, you know, was it a grass fed, um, cow who got to have fun on the field and all that sort of stuff so you know us as society we we care more about the process before it gets to the shop um than others than other generations ever did because it wasn't it wasn't known it wasn't advertised it wasn't you couldn't you couldn't find out basically unless you knew someone who was a farmer or who worked on a you know cotton plantation you just didn't know um and um, this is, is something that to add to that is that it's probably going to be a growing trend because, particularly with our our activist nature, the sorry the activist nature of our our millennial generation, we care more about stuff than previous generations did. We're less, um, we tend to be less money focused and more about like moral and ethically focused. Like a real credit to us, I think you know, um, the millennials and like kids of today, we we do like cop a lot of about being you know addicted to our phones and not knowing enough about the world and never having to work hard and being lazy and whinges and stuff like that but like let's look at what's going on right now who is who's standing up for the planet who who is caring about animals who is trying to make changes and trying to get the baby boomers to like listen and and do things for because it's right not because we make money i just think yeah i think the fact that we are we do have an activist nature. I think that's a, that's definitely a credit to our generation, I have to say. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so we'll continue. Offshore manufacture also is difficult for local designers. So there's a lot of local designers that would like to keep production in Australia. It's, it's impossible. Um, the cost of production will be high um, due to much higher minimum wage here and therefore the product will need to be sold at such a high price point, which is exactly the example I gave with the coat. Um, to cover costs that it's just it's it's yeah it's not realistic um, if the price is too high and only reachable by the upper class with high disposable income and if there are other similar products that are in competition like so similar let's say you've got like I don't know freaking I don't know new type of earphones or whatever and there, there's similar competitors um, that are sold at a more affordable price point because they do use offshore manufacturing, then it's likely that the commercial success will be affected because why would they, why would people buy something that's sort of the same quality and just almost the same thing or very similar product? It's so much more affordable. So yeah, 
Anyway, the um, the way that you um, can compete with that, though, is to appeal to our patriotic nature. So you might be able to say, yeah, yeah, hang on a sec. Mine is actually more expensive, but we're homegrown. Um, and look, we will showcase the symbols. We'll show you that 70% of this is all from Australian stuff. And um, so you're appealing to the mor their moral compass. You're, you're basically saying like, yeah, we're more expensive, but the cheaper version is um, unethical and they pay their they pay the Bangladeshi ladies nothing and so you're trying to be like make the right choice you're trying to ask consumers to make the right choice but you know that's still it's a it's a gamble um, this is a new um, in our like we have the Australian made but this is the, a new thing that's going on food now um, because a lot of a lot of brands like to um, appeal to our patriotic nature but they're actually like hardly Australian at all. Um, they might be like an Australian brand or they might, you know, end up being packaged in Australia and put on the shelves. But actually, I like most of the stuff comes from elsewhere, um, from imported ingredients. So, um, yeah, you can't get away with that anymore. So the bar graph kind of shows you that, yeah, this one was packed in Australia from less than 10% Australian ingredients, whereas this one made in Australia from at least 70% Australian ingredients. So it's also helping helping consumers um, sort of see behind the scenes um, of the production process without having to know exactly. Um, okay, moving on, global. How are we going with time? Oh, good. Well, we're going really well. <clears throat> Our next trend is global. Now this one, I feel like you can often bring this into a question. You can always like bring global in because this is what's really, um, this is how like the world works business wise now. So global is all about globalization. So globalization can be described as the world becoming smaller. The world is becoming smaller because distance is no longer a barrier um, to communication, to business, to product distribution, to marketing. That's not hard anymore. Um, you know, if you if you if you know anything about like the great um, roots of the world, like the the Silk Road and um, stuff like that, where the merchants would like travel all the way through the Middle East and into Asia, and then bring back these Oriental goods and stuff. Like that was like amazing that you could, but it was so, it was like s such a big deal to be, to go all that way. Whereas now it's like, you can just do it. It's so easy. So, um, products can literally be, um, marketed and sold all over the world without it being a massive issue, no matter where the actual production happens or where the designing happens. Um, Technological advancements have created easier and quicker access to remote places, facilitating trade, communication, and travel. Love that. Um, satellite communications is another technology. So, like, huge. Um, and this is, you know, something only of the 1900s that this sort of came out. And those in my class, when we watched Hidden Figures and we saw all the stuff, all the... Um, government funding going into the um, going into NASA for space related technologies and developments but satellite communication now um, via phone fax email online conferences they allow for fast simple communication between nations you can literally have a business partner in another country and it's not a problem at all apart from the time difference you can easily have a conference you can put them on the TV on the screen whatever so um, yeah that's a huge difference um, teams in different countries can design and produce projects cooperatively without the requirement of physical travel. You don't have to travel to monitor progress. You can do this remotely. And this is where we see the ability for technologies to develop faster because you might need to like get in touch with some guy in Korea who's like a leading tech in some particular type of new technology. Um, but you don't need to like go there. Um, you can just like get him on Skype or whatever. And um, you guys can work collaboratively and, and use each other as research to develop new innovations so this is yeah huge benefit in the design world um the global reach of the internet means consumers so us as consumers it's changed our lives it's changed our um our societal habits um we can purchase a product from the other side of the world without leaving our house um in fact it's often easier for me to buy something that might be coming from england than it is for me to drive up to miranda because oh i might have to like 
depending on what I'm looking like at the time, it might mean I need a shower, might mean I need to do my hair, I definitely need to put a face of makeup on, we're talking a couple of hours here, like it's just too much effort, and then I need a parking spot, and then like it's, if it's a weekend, like good God help me, I'm never going to find a park, and anyway, the point is, um, so sometimes it's, it's legitimately easier for consumers to buy something from a store that's in, on another country than it is to actually go to the shops, which is crazy to think of. That sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, this is a huge societal change. We are no longer limited by our own department store. The internet is like having a global Westfield. Combine that with the transition of online banking. So online banking technologies, um, this has just changed everything as well. So um, there's another development that's in that's helped with globalization and it's also helped with our societal habits. We've got PayPal, we've got Afterpay. We can we can um, look at lots of implications to do with this technology as well. Sorry, I just need to keep checking the time. Ten minutes, we're doing well. Um, <clears throat> So the, all these dot points here, I kind of like, I started really summarizing because um, I wanted to really look at like effects, effects, effects and stuff. So, okay, let's look at online banking and, and different sort of um, um, technologies to do with use, to do with all of this kind of stuff. So we're moving away from retail. So this was going to have an impact on jobs and on the retail customer service industry. Um, do we need customer service anymore? Do we, do we actually want someone saying, hi, can I help you? How are you? Do you need another size? Like, to be honest, I don't even like that. That just pisses me off. I'm just leaving me alone. Let me just do it myself. But anyway, um, scam sites is another implication. Um, money that never, like that, that they take your money. And that's like, I'm always so sus about the sponsored ads on Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like, that looks cool. That's a fun, that's a fun space, um, plant with planets on it, phone cover. I really want that, but will it ever arrive? Anyway. If anyone's seen my phone lately, it does have a space, um, planets and stars phone cover. So that was, it was a gamble, but it worked out. But yeah, definitely there's heaps of scam sites and they don't deliver the goods and they steal your credit card details and your, your identity and all this business. So there's huge security implications there. Um, in fact, that was a, that was a question. Oh gosh, look at all my tabs. I'll never find it. Oh my God, I found it. Um, Explain how the use of new and emerging technologies had a ne negative impact on security. So that was a HSC. Um, look, it's a whole long page, six marker question in the last year's DNT exam. So there you go. Um, let's go back to where we were. So yeah, security is a massive problem. Um, the ease of transferring money over the internet has also created um, increased manipulation scammers. So these are people who like, you know, pretend to love you and all that sort of stuff and convince you and they're the victim and they need this. All the ones that, um, you know, those scammers that like tell you that the CIA needs you to pay this or whatever, or you've got a fine or you've, they get, the debt collectors are going to come after you or the FBI and stuff like you get calls like this. And anyway, and you can think if you're like an elderly person, you don't know, and you just do it. Um, so yeah, here's examples of just some, some scam, um, or ads where they, um, you know, they tell you you've won money in, but they put the, they put the, um, the, it's it's in breach of trademark, but they put the the logo there, so you're like, oh yeah, that's trustworthy. I have PayPal. Oh my gosh, I have seven thousand dollars, thirteen thousand. Scam. It's a scam. So yeah, issues there definitely. Fishing for your personal data. Um, there's an example of the the ones that pretend to love you, and you end up sending all your money there, and then you're broke. And yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, these are all obviously problems with that as well. <clears throat> what about the older generation? Uh, what if they're not tech savvy? They like to use physical cash. Are we transitioning to a cashless society? What implications could that have? How often do you actually take money out of the ATM when it's just easy to tap, tap, tap away with your credit card? I know I tap. I know it's actually hard now that I, um, you know how like me and Mrs. Kennedy and um, Mrs. Harrison, um, Margaret from Diverse Learning, we go to Masses. We go to six o'clock Masses and Aloysius now because I moved there into the street. So it's like something cute that we do when we go to dinner afterwards. But I never have freaking money to put in the little jar thing, the collection, because I'm like, oh, my God, I, like, literally just tap with my card. So now I'm, like, really conscious of making sure I have something to donate. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely transitioning to a cashless society. I feel it. Um, 
tap and go is a technology that's changed societal habits when that came in. That's only quite recent, but I'm like totally used to it. So it's definitely changed my habits. Um, what are the impacts of that? If, I lo if I, we lose our card, anyone can tap away. As long as they're spending less than a hundred dollars, um, they can take lots of my money without needing a pin. Um, it's easy for me to spend as well because I'm, it's not, um, it's not physical cash. So it's not, I don't see the money in my wallet disappearing. So I just tap, tap, tap. And I'm not like, I'm like, oh, it's like not real, but it is real. Um,